review of fifth grade. How exciting. Well, actually, it is the first lesson of the fifth grade math, but I have to be honest with you, this is like my 200th video. So, I kind of went in reverse because our district had us doing different chapters and I wanted to come back around and make some videos for chapter one. So, I'm here, even though now I teach sixth grade. Okay. But that's just how it is. Come and take a look at our lesson 1.1. Yes, you can see our topic is all about place value and patterns. Yes, that's a lot about what math is. A lot about place value and patterns. Good thing they're starting off there. We have an essential question. That's right. It says, how can you describe the relationship between two place value positions? And that essential question is our learning target. This is our objective. This is what we are hoping that you guys learn as a, what we call a student outcome. Kind of weird. Anyway, we have ourselves an investigate. This is a hands-on. So hopefully you have maybe some base 10 blocks with you. You can work with me as I do this video. I, on the other hand, will only have virtual base 10 blocks if I have any at all. And it does say materials, base 10 blocks. It says you can use base 10 blocks to understand the relationships among place value positions. Use a large cube for 1,000, a flat for 100, a long for 10, and a small cube for 1. They give all those different names. So if we look down below, we can see the number itself. And then you can see the value. That is the value. 1,110 and 1. And it's interesting because when I look at this table, what I see is I see how the one place value to the left is 10 times greater than the place value to its right. So 10 is 10 times greater than 1. And 100 is 10 times greater than 10. And 1,000 is 10 times greater yeah, than 100. That shows me this is a base 10 system we have we begin to group items in groups of 10. And we start with a little small cube, which you learn in second or third grade, and then we keep moving to where eventually we end up with 10 groups of 100, and then that makes 1,000. And base 10 blocks helps us see that. So let's go ahead and look at some of the problems down below. It says complete the comparisons below to describe the relationship from one place value position to the next place value position. Look at the long and compare it to the small cube. All right, I'm looking at the long. I see one long stick of 10 small cubes together, and then I see one small cube. So the long is blank times as much as the small cube. Well, we just talked about it. The long is 10 times as much as the small cube. Now look at the flat and compare it to the long. Right, the flat is 10 times as much as the long because we're moving to the left and the value increases by 10 times. Look at the large cube and compare it to the flat. The large cube is 10 times as much as the flat. Now it says look at the flat and compare it to the large cube. Well, if we look at the flat and compare it to the large cube, we're not comparing the large cube to the flat, but we're comparing it from the flat to the large. So yes, the large cube is 10 times as much as the flat, but when we compare it from the flat to the large, we can't say that the flat's 10 times as much because it's not. So we say that the flat is actually one tenth of the larger cube because we, we need to have 10 flats to equal the large cube. Therefore, since there's just one flat there, that's one tenth, we would need nine more. That's why it's expressed as that. So that's going to follow a pattern here. Look at the long and compare it to the flat. It's the same situation. It's one tenth because we would need to have 10 of those longs to make one flat. Look at the small cube and compare it to the long. Again, one tenth of the long. Just did that in reverse. So what did we learn here is that, yeah, that when we look at place value, that either the digit, the place value, is 10 times greater than the place value to its right, but it's one-tenth as much as the place value to its left. So numbers and digits and place value get larger as you move to the left and get smaller as you move to the right. And down here we have math talk. It says how many times as much is the flat compared to the small cube? We already answered that didn't we? I think we did. The flat, oh no, we didn't compare that. The flat compared to the small cube, it wasn't the long. So now in this case, because, because the flat is 100 and the small cube is 1, we can say it's 100 times as much. So 100 times 
okay? When we compare the flat to the small cube, the large cube to the small cube, yeah, it's going to even grow more. You would need 1,000 of those little small cubes to make up one large cube. Okay? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now let's move on to the next page. Yes! Oh my, good part. This is where we have to really be thinking. Mathematical practice seven. Look for a pattern. Describe the pattern you see when you move from a lesser place value position to the next greater place value position. Okay, whoa. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this already. So as we're moving from a lesser place value, so let's start at the small cube, the ones place, it says and if we move to the next greater place value, we can see that the value is going to be increased by a power of 10, 10 times as much. So let's go ahead and write those notes down. Okay, and there you go. Now let's go ahead and move on to question number two. In question number two, again, look for a pattern. We're using mathematical practice, and mathematical practice seven, I believe, talks about structure and pattern, so we're looking at structure. Describe the pattern you see when you move from a greater place value position to the next lesser place value position. Well, that I would think to myself, we're doing the opposite now. We're moving to the right, not to the left. And as we move from a greater place value position to the left, then we're actually learning that the position to the right is only one-tenth of value to the position to its left. So that's the key thing to remember. It's one-tenth as much as that place value to the left or to the greater place value. Let me put those notes down. Okay, so as I move from a greater place value position to the next lesser place value position, the position to the right becomes one-tenth as much as the position to its left. I don't know if that makes sense, one-tenth as much, but one-tenth the value of. I guess there are different ways we could phrase that. Okay, it's time to make connections. Yeah, okay. It says you can use your understanding of place value patterns and a place value chart to write numbers that are ten times as much as or one-tenth of any given number. What do we have here? Hundred thousands, ten thousands, one thousands, hundreds, tens, ones. Okay, all whole numbers. Okay, I can see here ten times as much as that. Okay, but when we're comparing it the other way around, this number here is one-tenth of that number in the hundreds. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see about the blanks. Blank is ten times as much as 300. Okay, are they looking for the number? So that would be three thousands, right? We are in the thousands place. Therefore, the three, the digit three, has the value of 3,000. Woohoo! And then it says blank is one tenth of 300. So we're using the question mark here, comparing it to the 300. Therefore, it's one tenth as much, making that 30. We still have the digit three, but it's one tenth the value of 300 because it's to its right. Okay, were I supposed to do that first? I have no idea. Now let's look down below. Use the steps below to complete the table. Okay, step one, write the given number in a place value chart. Okay, we have a number, we've done that. Cool, we have 10, 70, and 9,000. Use the place value chart to write a number that is 10 times as much as the given number. And then step three is use the place value chart to write a number that is one-tenth of the given number. Ooh, this is fun. I like this, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we have 10, 10 times as much, 10 times 10, 100. That's beautiful, yeah. Now we're going to go ahead and figure out what the one-tenth of the value of this number, not of 100, one-tenth of 10, right, is going to be, that's right, just going to be 1, because that is in the tens place, and now this is in the ones place, so we move one place value to the right. And would it be true if we said it the other way around? So one-tenth of 10 equals 1, so then that means that 10 is 10 times greater than 1, and that is true. Now I do 70, let's just whip these off. 700, same kind of pattern. Here we're gonna end up with seven. 70 is 10 times greater than seven. Seven is one tenth of 70. And now we have 9,000, ooh, I'm really nervous now. Yeah, I'm scared, yeah, right. Okay, now I have 90,000 because I'm just adding on one power of 10. It became 10 times greater. Well, one less zero is simply gonna be 900. Okay, because 900 is one tenth of 9,000. Yes! So cool! I know. You're wondering, hey, you hear that music in the background? Yeah. That's my signal to let me know, Mr. War, the video needs to come to an end. Okay, as much as it makes me sad, it's the end, my friends. It's the end of the video, and that means we need to move on to 1.2. So, hopefully we'll see you next time around, my friends. Like I always say, live long and prosper.